script is, is quite round. It's quite round and it's quite wide. And um, if you've done any Edgepen work before, and particularly if you learned italic, it's much it's a much narrower script and it's taller. So this is sort of short and wide. And so <coughs> when you're making the um, you know this basic stroke, which is in the N and M and the I, this initial part is, is round. It doesn't just start and then down. It's, it's got a curve to it. So on all of these strokes that have arches, you need to think about the roundness. You need to think about the fact that you're pulling the pen horizontally before you come down. Now, the first stroke, okay, is not as pronounced, but then, you know, they all have this, all right, then make the next stroke actually goes farther if we're going to make an N. Quite wide. It's actually wider than the lowercase that we're used to seeing. This is heavier and wider. Thicker stroke relative to the height and wider. Normally, the, if you think of the R lowercase letters, you get, a, and you think of them as being written by an edge pen, then you get a ratio which is more like, you know, five, five pen widths high, six pen widths high, something like that. So, th so this is, the reason that it, that it doesn't look heavier is that it's wide. And so it's, and, and the same is true of the round strokes. When you come around, make sure you come around and then go back underneath horizontal. So think about the horizontal part of these strokes. It's not just, it's not quick. The turn is not never quick. It's always slow, round turn. His A and O is a little bit more narrow. But Okay, same thing with the E, roundness. The G is very tricky. <laughs> it's very tricky. It's, um, you know, it's still the G, and the, the lowercase G and the lowercase A are still in flux. You know, we still have two mainstream versions of these forms. We have what's called a single story A and the two-story A, and the same with the G. And the Helvetica has, you know, the two-story A, but the single-story G. Um, <coughs> but there are sans-serif typefaces. Futura has the one-story A and the one-story G. Circular. And, of course, italic uses also ambiguous form. Sometimes you, you almost always have in italic the one story A. Okay, one story A. But um, you can have either the one or the two story G. So in italic you get this form. And then you get either this one, which of course is makes something that's compatible with the A, but you also get, often get this one. Right. So, <coughs> let's write out something here. And, and we have to make up an S, so let me, let me I'm going to write out, I suppose that's an I. There's no dots on any of the I's, are there? All right, so let's do that one. So this C is not super wide, but it comes out pretty straight, not much curve on the top. And then O. I think that the O is more, I, I should have started more vertically. I, I can't remember the numbers. I was trying to remember this this morning for the Taiji, but it, the people have done studies about this, about how many times you have to repeat a physical movement until it actually becomes 
you know, natural without thinking about it. And it's a very large number. It's like 10,000 <laughs> 10, or some number like that. You know. So you, you, you can't just do it and have it work. But the other thing is that the bad news is that if you repeat the mistake 10,000 times, then you've got that right in there, you know. So you want to correct in the beginning, you know. You want to do a little bit, and then you want to look at the model, and then you want to consciously, you know, figure out what you're going to do the next time so that you don't do it the same, don't keep making the same mistake over and over. And that's, um, that is critical practice, and that is very important in actually learning how to do this. So don't do it too fast. And if you make the same, you know, if you, if you practice a line of the same letters over and over, that's fine. But do it in that fashion. You know, don't just keep doing it. In the, in the very beginning, do one, examine it, try to figure out by comparing it what doesn't match and then what you're going to do to make it the way it appears in the model. Um, there is also a question in all of this of establishing a rhythm. Okay, the rhythm of the writing is the secret to getting it to look uniform. You know, when you watch someone who's an expert at doing it, I'm not an expert, but I, if I do it a little bit, I can get into the ry a rhythm of doing it. There's, you know, each stroke has its little rhythm, and, and you go along. And that's why it looks uniform. It's not because somebody is slavishly trying to do this with each letter, you know, carefully, carefully. No, it's done, you know, at a pretty good pace. And I was telling some of you that I went on Saturday, I went to the Houghton Library at Harvard, and I saw this Poggio manuscript, which it turns out isn't by Poggio, it's by one of his students. Um, and he has some of the marginal notes in it, but. Um, it's huge. It's, it's, it's you know it's that thick. It's on very thin vellum. It's it's about that big, and it's tiny writing. You know, and it's only you can see where the lines are ruled. It's only ruled on the baseline. There are none of these other lines. Just the baseline. Incredibly uniform. A whole book like that. Wow.